Welcome to ABC 7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Eric Elkin. For the next half hour, we're talking about men's health. November is National Men's Health Awareness Month. The most visible acknowledgement of this month's distinction is No Shave November, when men don beards to raise awareness. Was not able to partake, but let's be honest, many men may not shave this month and still not go to the doctor. So tonight we're focusing on doctor's advice for men. What kind of screenings should they be scheduling? and at what age. And we are also hearing a tale of cancer survival from one man who learned about some major health issues through a blood drive organized by his employer. But first, we're joined by Dr. Martha Montañez, a family medicine physician with the Hospitals of Providence. First of all, Dr. Montañez, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. So first of all, we're talking about men's health. Um, what are the main issues that you see in male patients? Um, the main issue that I see is that men think that they are invincible. <laughs> they think that they cannot get sick. They think they're strong enough and then they don't get sick. That's what they think. And they don't go to the doctor because uh, we find things that they don't have and uh, sometimes they don't believe that. So that invincibility factor uh, by the time you see them, are the issues exacerbated? Uh, well, it depends. You know, what, I, what I'm what i seeing in my clinic, most of the men that come here for a, you know, annual physical exam is because the wife brought them <laughs> against their will, or when they're starting feeling sick, like for example, headaches or feeling dizzy, or they feel tired uh, faster when they walk or run uh, is when they decide to come. So, is there one particular issue that presents itself the most in terms of a, a medical condition in this area? Uh, here in El Paso, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm Hispanic and I think uh, Hispanic population, um, they don't look, they don't like to look for the doctor. They don't like to go to the doctor because they think they're healthy. Uh, they think, bec you know, because they're, I don't know, Hispanic, they don't get sick or, or they think because they come to the doctor, um, we find things that they don't have. Um, and I think that's that's our culture. So we're talking about issues, even something like blood pressure and uh, cholesterol, right? Yes, exactly. Because if they think I don't feel anything, so I'm, I'm healthy. I don't feel anything. Why do I have to go to the doctor? That's the mentality. So I would imagine that a lot of men may not even have a general practitioner that they go to on an annual basis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a lot of population, they go to the doctor only when they feel sick, like when they have a cold. Uh, and if they don't have a cold, they don't need to go to the doctor because they're fine. That's what they think. Of course. So as a doctor, um, when would you recommend for men to start going to an annual checkup? So it's recommended to start, I mean, as we do um, annual checkups on pediatric patients, it's always good to go to the doctor at any age, especially because we're seeing a lot of uh, sexual transmitted diseases on teenagers and young population. So it's good to start going to the doctor as soon as you're 18, continue going to your doctor to get your annual exam and be checked. Um, if you're a smoker, if you're a smoker sooner, I mean, as soon as you turn 18, you should go to the doctor every year to get your physical exam. That way we can find uh, or discover disease that you can have and we can prevent complications. Uh, so as soon as they turn 18, they should come to the doctor every year. And what about those male specific screenings? I'm talking about uh, colonoscopies. I'm talking about the prostate exams. When do men have to start going to the doctor for those? Uh, the colonoscopy is now by the United States Preventing Service Task Force. They recommend to start screening every adult at age 45 for colon cancer screening. There is two ways to do it. One is through colonoscopy, and the other one is something that is called Cologar. That is a test that can be done at home, so they don't have to go you know, to another specialist to do it. They can do it at home. Uh, other tests that is very important, uh, the United States Preventing Service Task Force they don't recommend prostate um, screening tests um, anymore, like mastering. They used to recommend starting at 15 to do it. Um, but now the recommendation is more to talk to the patient about risk and benefits about the test, and then make a, a, a informed decision uh, to do the prostate, um, 
prostate uh, cancer screening, and that is mainly at, at 50. Uh, it's recommended to screen every adult against hepatitis C at, uh, as soon as they are 18 to check against hepatitis C once in a lifetime. It's recommended to screen HIV every teenager uh, starting from 15 or 16 years of age and any time in their life once in a lifetime. Uh, patients that smoke, uh, men, they should be screening against uh, something that is called aortic aneurysm starting at age 50, uh, 65 by an ultrasound. Uh, there is also recommended to screen every adult older than 35 that has uh, overweight or obesity to screen against um, diabetes mellitus. Uh, it's also recommended to screen um, against uh, hypertension every patient with obesity, with diabetes, overweight, and older than 35. So, I mean, obviously those are a lot of screenings. I'm sure a lot of people feel overwhelmed, but those are a lot that could be handled if they uh, go to an annual checkup. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. If uh, the patient goes to see their physician uh, to get their annual physical exam, depends on their age and their sex. Uh, and we're talking about this time on men, they can do everything in one visit. Uh, and the patient can decide why they wanna, what they wanna do. I mean, it's recommended to do all of them, depends on the risk factors, um, and they can be in the same visit. Um, there is another screening uh, for lung cancer screening uh, for patients that smoke. Um, and, and that is a very important screening because we can catch lung cancer on time. You mentioned something earlier, um, and I think maybe a lot of people maybe don't think about it because there isn't as much of a focus on STDs as there was when HIV was really um, very prominent um, in the United States. Um, but STDs, I'm sure that people do not like to talk about it, both men and women, um, teenagers who may be already sexually active, not talking about it with their parents. How do, what would you say to make sure that teenagers and young adults and, and even older men are getting screened for STDs? You know, I don't think uh, they should be embarrassed about going to the doctor and be screened for these things um, because these diseases can bring complications, uh, severe and serious complications. Uh, for example, herpes is a disease that's gonna stay in their body forever. So it's good to screen people in time to prevent spreading. Um, HIV, now they're, they're there's treatment for that, so the people won't die of that. Uh, and teenagers, uh, they have uh, the right to go and see the doctor without letting know their parents that there is a, a right of a teenager so they can get the treatment that they need. Um, young women that can uh, get gonorrhea and chlamydia, they can develop something that is called a pelvic inflammatory disease. And this infection can cause infertility. So that's why they should not feel embarrassed. I mean, they should come to the doctor, be screened, and talk about prevention, how to prevent that, how to prevent a, a you know, sexual transmitted disease. Um, I've seen cases of, um, you know, women are married, they are sexually active only with their husband, and the husband, for some reason, decides to have another partner, and then they transmit these syphilis or HIV to these women. Um, so they should not feel embarrassed. They should come and see the doctor to prevent uh, complications and even death. In your final thoughts, Dr. Montanez, yes, um, what would you tell men or men's loved ones to urge them to go to the doctor at least once a year? So what I tell my patients when they don't want to, uh, you know, follow up after labs and everything is like, do you want to see your kids growing up? Do you want to see your grandchildren growing up? Do you want to, you know, die older with, uh, you know, quality of life? Uh, next to your loved ones. So the best, ways to, the best way to do it is to come to the doctor, get your annual exam. If we find something, give you treatment on time to prevent complications. So you can have, you can die older with a good quality of life. And you can see your grandkids growing. You can see your kids getting married and enjoy life in a healthy way. Is there anything else that you want to add that maybe we didn't discuss at this time? Um, I wanna tell everybody to go to the doctor. Um, I know um, medicine in this country is expensive. I know it costs money, but I think our health is the most important gift that we have and we need to take care of it, preserve it, because if we are sick, we cannot work. If we cannot work, we cannot provide to our loved ones. So take 
Take one time, go to your doctor, be checked. If you're healthy, great. See you next year. If you're not, we will treat your disease and you can have a good quality of life. All right, Dr. Martha Montañez with Providence and Family Medicine. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. Still ahead, I sit down with a prostate cancer survivor, how he discovered the cancer and his message to all men and the people who love them. We'll be right back. Another car ran me off the freeway and I got hurt and getting the help of an attorney may be tough. No, it's not. I called the strong arm and they made it easy for me. They took care of everything. Dealing with the insurance company on your own can cost you a lot of money. When you call, our team of professionals will immediately start working on your case. I called the strong arm and they helped me within minutes. They got me $36,000. If you got injured in a wreck, we can help. The strong arm makes it easy. The strong arm, 800 then all sevens. Have a car? A title? Get up to $10,000 for the holidays with Title Max. Go to TitleMax.com, enter your car year, make, model. See how much you can get. Check out TitleMax.com for the most cash you need. Check out TitleMax.com, shop us for rates. Check out TitleMax.com, all credit types accepted. Find out why so many people say, I got my title back with Title Max. I got my title back with Title Max. Get your title back with Title Max. Think all senior care is the same? Think Bien Vivir. As El Paso's only all-inclusive senior health program, you can expect a community of friends, your own team of health care providers, a healthy nutrition program, and therapy that improves your quality of life. We can even fill your prescriptions, all under one roof and with no out-of-pocket costs. So enjoy your independence and leave your health care needs to us. It's not too good to be true. It's Bien Vivir. Call us today. Every day, the sun rises, and our food is safe to eat. Our legacies are honored. And our country protected. All thanks to federal employees. You are why GEHA offers the right health and dental plans at a fair price, and one of the largest provider networks to best serve those who serve us all. GEHA. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. Our topic tonight, men's health, as it is Men's Health Awareness Month. And joining me now is Paco Salas Porras. He is a prostate cancer survivor. And for those of you with a really good memory, ABC 7 actually profiled Paco back in 2016 when he was diagnosed. Take a look at this video from the story back in 2016. Paco, you are the finance manager at Casa Ford Lincoln. It was actually an event there that you credit for saving your life. Pretty much so. Uh there was a blood drive, and a friend of mine was doing the blood drive, so I kind of mustered everybody up to do give blood, and I gave blood, and then uh, the next day she called me, and she said, hey, man, your cholesterol level's pretty high. I said, yeah, all we do is eat donuts and candy at Casa Ford, and um, so anyways, I went home. She, they don't check for cancer in a blood drive, and I went home, and my wife, uh, you know, she insisted that I go get a blood test, and uh, that's when it all started, pretty much. So really, you took it uh, even a step further, because you get the initial, you, you give the blood initially, you get the, the high cholesterol. A lot of people might think, oh, just adjust my diet, but you took exactly. it a step further. Yeah, I, I, and that's what I told her. I said, I'll just quit eating the candy, and the, I'm not one to go, uh, I'm not one to go to doctors, and unless it's fall, uh, hanging off of me or whatever, but... Uh, this time she insisted that I go and, and get my blood work, so she probably saved my life. But uh, then you go and you, they do a thorough blood test for your PSA level. And your PSA level is um, a level of enzyme of some kind that's in your body that fights cancer. And so when that level's high, that's when they check for cancer. So when you get that, uh, that diagnosis, what was, what was the reaction? Uh, well, there's a story behind that. You know, you fight cancer with with uh, three things. You find it, you fight it physically, uh, mentally, and with your doctor, of course, but also spiritually. And so I reached out to my faith, and uh, there's a story behind that. I, uh, this guy that I've known for uh, 30 years, he saved me when I was 22 years old. And so uh, my dad sold the business, me and him split ways. 21 years passed after he saved me, w reluctantly saved me. I just did it to appease him at that time. My faith level was very low. 
But anyway, the day the doctor called Casa Ford, August 3rd of 2016, um, my, uh, the, he, the doctor said, hey, I'm sorry, out of your 12 biopsies, five of them are positive, mm -hmm. and you have prostate cancer. I dropped my head in my, la in my hand, and I was weeping, and I was saying that I'm going to die, and I'm going to have chemo, and I'm never going to see my kids and my family, and I'm going to lose my job. This is the worst day of my life. And as I rose my head and picked it up, I hadn't seen this gentleman in 21 years. He was standing in my doorway. Wow. Yeah, it was a wake-up call for me. And whether it was coincidental or not, it was a, a big coincidence because he saved me. And now he's standing in my doorway. And I said, why are you here? And he said, someone told me you wanted to talk to me. Hmm. And as that happened, then he, I was, he came in and I said, well, I, that was my doctor. And he just told me I have cancer. And he said, oh, now I know I'm here. Let's pray. So he prayed to me about fear. And fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Hmm. So I did not get chemo. Uh, my hair didn't fall out. I see my wife. I didn't lose my job. None of the fear that I had that moment happened. And um, two, uh, two months later, they took out my prostate, and I'm six years clean, going on my seventh year. And so. since then, you've really taken an initiative to use this platform as someone who got diagnosed, survived, and went through that whole process to share information with others. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, well, uh, Rio Grande Urology were the guys that took uh, care of me, and uh, Dr. Tabor and uh, Dr. Spear and Dr. Baggs. But um, that was, they asked me to speak at one of their events. And so when I spoke there, I would speak, the men that were there, I asked them, I said, who in here has a truck? And pretty much everybody raised their hand. And then who in here changes their oil every 4,000 miles? And pretty much everybody raised their hand. And then who in here checks their blood? And one guy in the back raised his hand. And, and so I told everyone else, don't check your oil. If you're not going to check your own oil, so you're not going to be around to drive your truck. So you got to go get, uh, you got to be proactive in life of all your medical needs that you need, you know. And that's something that's a, obviously a very important message because uh, from the story we told with you back in 2016, one of the things you said is you were kind of a macho man at the time. And so it wasn't something that was necessarily at the forefront of your mind. So your perspective now has changed. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, nobody wants to go and sit in an office and nobody wants to wait for the doctor and nobody wants to check, you know, I feel good, I'm good. And I felt good. I had no signs whatsoever of prostate cancer which is not unusual because can, uh, prostate cancer is a very slow moving uh, cancer. So, um, you know, I was, I, when I went reluctantly, then uh, he said my PSA level was 5.7, which is high. Yours is probably 0 0.09, you know, 0 0.09 at the, but anyway, so it was at 5.7. At that time, they put you on an antibiotic to see if you're prostate is just infected with a, 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 a infection which would be pushing on your bladder making you go to the bathroom at night uh, several times and so I was on that for 30 days that didn't um, nothing happened with that my PSA level went down to 47 and then um, so then they do another check where they go in and they actually pull out pieces of, of your prostate with uh, they do 21 uh, pulls and then they know exactly, they do it on a graft on your prostate and they know exactly where that cancer is. So uh, from there, uh, it came back positive and um, then, you know, five of them came back. And at that time I went to Mayo and got a second opinion and the guy there, he said, you know, what are you gonna, you know, why you wait and get it out of you or the, there's, uh, there's four things you can do. You can do freeze it you can do radiation from the outside or radiation pellets which they actually put into your prostate or removal and I chose removal and um, it's worked out really well um, all my bodily functions work uh, I'm pretty I would say that I'm 99.9% .9 normal there is some issues that you have um, your sexual nerves are wrapped around your prostate and with this new procedure of the da Vinci robot it, it's so precise and so wonderful. It does 
it just doesn't do prostates it does hysterectomies mm -hmm. and all sorts of things it's it's uh, it's um, the doctors over there and you're on the table over there and he actually you have four arms in you and then one over your belly button that bags your it's like a fishing net that bags your prostate after he removes it but your sexual nerves are wrapped around your prostate so with the new machine it's so precise it shaves off all your nerves so all your nerves are he puts them they're over here and then he cuts out your prostate and he hooks you up to your your uh, your line your P line and then that's um, that's you don't have your prostate anymore and so you mentioned this story, uh, the, the message that you share about the oil change, and that seems pretty, uh, yeah. it makes a lot of sense for a lot of men, but for, for people that are out there and are still hesitant and, and, and there's just, men tend to be stubborn, <laughs> I think. You know, you, how do you break through that? How do you you know you have You have to, like yourself, uh, I, I asked you how old you were, you're 30, 30, so you're not, you don't have to go get a test actually uh, until you're 40 if you had cancer in your family but you know it's free to get your blood work you know go get your blood work and know your ammonia levels know your vitamin levels know everything that they tell you in the blood work learn about your body because you know you don't you're not gonna you're gonna have stuff creep up on you and then it's too late and I know a lot of people that have prostate cancer that waited too long and some of them didn't make it you know and I imagine if you feel had you waited longer you may not be sitting here I right don't now. think uh, I don't think I'd be here and I, like I said I had no signs I was physically okay I wasn't getting up in the night and so yeah you know it was a blessing from my wife to keep pushing me actually she made the appointment and then I went and it started it is you know when they tell you you have cancer it is a a lifetime thing it doesn't ever go away right. because you know like now I'm six years and oh I got a pain right here oh did it come back or you know stuff like that but uh, you always live with it like they had to do a bone scan after they diagnosed me so I had to wait on that and then they had to send after they removed my prostate I had to wait on that to be see if it broke out and was in my it got out of yeah. my into my body but so it's a little waiting period but now I live in no fear and it is what it is you know your life is it but you have to take care of yourself whether you know uh, whether whatever your problems are in your body you know you know your body better than anybody right but um, you need to go to a doctor and and do a physical like you those guys are always changing their oil always changing their air filters always working on their cars but if the body if the driver's no good then why right. work on the car Paco Salas Porras, thank you so much for taking some time and sharing your story. It's an important yeah. one to share. Thank you with so our much for having tonight. me there. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you so much, Eric. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. We'll be right back. Shop huge Black Friday savings this Wednesday only at Ashley Home Store. From 10 a.m. to midnight, save 30% off with no minimum purchase. That's 30% off store wide. Wednesday only, 10 a.m. to midnight at Ashley Home Store. Mr. Rhodes? That was a little too close for anyone's comfort, mine included. I don't want to hurt anybody. The Crosswalk Stripes are sending you a message. Stop for pedestrians, got it. And slow down. I'll keep my eyes open from now on. And we'll all get where we're going safely. I want that, Mr. Rhodes. I just love humanity. Does anybody need a hug? The Medicare annual enrollment period is upon us, and with that comes loads of confusing junk mail, celebrity commercials promising everything under the sun, and unsolicited calls from telemarketers. Don't fall into that trap of confusion. Get the straight facts about Medicare plans from someone local and from someone trusted. Call the agents of Health Plans of Texas. We're here to help. Remember, when you think about Medicare plans, think of Health Plans of Texas. dreams happen. We make paths that weren't there before. It doesn't matter how far we have to go. Or the obstacles we have to overcome. And even when it seems like we can't go on. You're it. We learn and we come back stronger than before. The all-new CRV Hybrid and CRV, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles.
Ashley Home Store's Black Friday is here. Doors open Friday at 7 a.m. Shop amazing doorbusters at 50% off. Plus, starting at 7 a.m., get free $200 Ashley cash. 7 a.m. to midnight Friday at Ashley Home Store. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. I'm Eric Elkin. And I'm Stephanie Valle. Tonight we focused on men's health as November is Men's Health Awareness Month. And Eric, so much time is spent focusing on women's health during October since it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And it makes sense to go from October into November talking about men's health, which is why we wanted to take the time at this moment to talk about men. Some takeaways from tonight. You want to go to the doctor for an annual checkup every year. Schedule those colorectal exams starting at 45. And if you're 50, get your prostate exam. And like Dr. Montañez said, if if you want to see your children and grandchildren grow up or if you want to enjoy retirement, take care of your health. It is the greatest gift we have. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good night, everyone, and thank you for watching ABC 7 Extra. Thank you for watching. ABC 7 News is now available on any of these streaming services as well as the KVIA News and KVIA Weather and Traffic apps.